Can we please talk about Man United v Tottenham? I know some days have passed now and I haven't reviewed it quickly. I need to start doing these match reviews a bit sooner, um, you know, post-match, so I can get my feet, thoughts and feelings straight from, you know, fresh from the flipping feelings of the actual match. But bloody hell, what a terrible, terrible performance. Result, not too bad, considering how well um, Spurs have been playing lately, even though their results haven't been great because they're one of the best attacking teams in the league. They have one of the most, you know, they probably scored the most goals as well, if I'm not mistaken. I remember seeing a stat about that somewhere. So result-wise, not too shabby. But performance, performance. Are you kidding me, bro? Are you kidding me? So Tottenham, v, no, May Night v Tottenham. We played them at home on the Sunday just gone. And if anything, they had they had probably their second string team out. Maybe even you'd maybe say their third base team because of all the injuries and suspensions they've got to their first team. Their players coming back from long stretches of injury like Van der Ven and a few other people. But in general, right, they had a midfield. Think about this. They had a midfield. They had a midfield containing, right, Oliver Skip. Oliver Skip and Pierre Holberg. And Hoiberg was a player that during the summer, I think we were linked to him, and loads of United fans on the timeline were spitting feathers at the thought of having Hoiberg pull up at our midfield. He's not good enough, he's too slow, he's no better than what we already have, blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what? Those three guys, including Bentoko, who's probably the best, you know, player on the pitch, really, um, w w when it comes to United, when it, when it comes to midfield players anyway, but those three midfielders in terms of Hoiberg, Bentoko and Skip absolutely dominated us in midfield. Absolutely ran the show, especially in the second half. It was pretty embarrassing to see. And if anything, this result, I feel like, was another reminder as to why people like myself are so vehemently and so staunchly Eric Ten Hag out. Because... It's one thing to say, hey, we need all our players to come back and us to play well. But then when you're facing a team like Tottenham, who's been depleted by injuries, depleted by injuries, it's really bad. It's really bad to see a team that's been depleted by injuries, especially some of their better players, still playing the same way they played at the beginning of the season. That fast, um, you know, aggressive, on the front foot, attacking football that they play, they could still play that with Hoiberg and Oliver Skipper uh, in midfield. They could still play that way with Richarlison, Timo Werner and Brian Johnson playing up front. I don't think any United fan would have conscious, even myself, a United fan that thinks most of our squad is fucking shit and we're a terrible team and we need the Glazers gone sooner rather than later because without the Glazers going, we're never going to be restored to our former glory. Even I, even I, a cynical doomsayer when it comes to United, I would not even swap one of those players in Tottenham's front line for any of ours. Timo Werner, Richarlison or Brian Johnson. Not really good players individually. But guess what? When you've got a good coach, he can coach fairly ordinary players. Players who are basically flattered to deceive. Very, um, you know, players that maybe have a lot of potential but haven't realised it at the moment. He can coach them into playing a somewhat attractive brand of football. He can coach them into having actual chances. He can coach them into a way of Richarlison winning, a, you know, running across his defender and flicking in the header into the fucking back post. He can coach that into his players. Yes, he can't coach Timo Werner into not being a player that's constantly offside, but he can coach them into being a threat. He can coach them into holding the whip. He can coach them into fucking always attacking and running behind the back line, as he did. Obviously, Brian Johnson, another one, maybe not the best player in the world, but still, he was able to coach these players into a coherent team in less than, what, six months or whatever it's been. So that's the really concerning thing for United fans. Um, Eric Ten Hag has spent a bunch of money. He still wants to spend more. He keeps talking about injured players and had you know and not having his best team that's why we're not playing a certain way then we face spurs at home and they bop us around the park and they play like their home they come to old trafford and they make that their home stadium they bop us around for the majority of the first half for definitely large parts of the second half i think the statistics can tell that actually they had the lion's share of possession yeah look at that look at the possession stats we were playing at home that's embarrassing look at the possessions that look at the stats overall the stats for that game tottenham 16 shots we had nine. Tottenham, six shots on target. We had two. Tottenham, possession, 64%. We have 36. Tottenham, 555 passes. We had 313. Tottenham, pass accuracy, 89. Us, 75. And they're playing Oliver Skip and Pierre Holberg in midfield. Can you imagine how embarrassing that was? So again, horrible performance. 
Decent result. I was happy for Rasmus Hoyland. His finish was incredible. Um, out of thin air, really. Um, it was a fit, it was a r ridiculously funny finish from Hoyland because if I'm not mistaken, Rashford actually got the ball on the wing and cut in and basically ran into defenders. That's kind of been his trademark the last 18 months or so. Rashford has been fucking terrible. He's one of our worst performing players, but consistently keeps playing because I guess the manager's in love with him or whatever is going on. But he's fucking terrible. He's definitely kind of reached his peak and. We'll probably need to sell him ASAP and he does this thing where he constantly runs into defenders he doesn't really have that explosive pace anymore he can't really dribble past people of course the finishing ability and shooting is obviously still good but when it comes to that attack and play and dribbling in the box he's not great and obviously his end product is a bit questionable so he cuts in tries to dribble past defenders but runs into them and then if I'm not mistaken I think it's Udogi or someone one of the defenders tackles him and that tackle gets passed onto Hoiberg Hoiberg a top couple of touches to push the ball out and then smashes it with his left foot right into the top corner amazing finish it kind of reminded me of like Aguero finishes back in the day where he wouldn't really had you know there wasn't much space and he'd smash the ball and it literally kind of ripped the net ripped the roof of the net amazing finish for him so I'm happy for Hoiberg because he's had a tough time in terms of scoring goals and playing well in the Premier League right but happy for him um then of course we continue playing Richarlison gets a, an opportunity to equalize and he does um it's a very well worked corner from them they whip the corner in very fast very flat into the near post Richarlison gets a run on his man obviously our defenders are static and not really active or defending or really being on on their toes he's able to run in our defender and flick the goal the, the headed ball into the back into the corner of the net really good um header to be honest even though I'm not the biggest fan of Richarlison I do respect his his aerial ability and how much of a threat he is with his head it's amazing to see that then in the second half the game completely shifted for some reason the game completely shifted in the fucking second half even though we went into that sec second half 2-1 up with a quite brilliant finish from Rashford um he actually gets into the box and he manages to get the ball out of his feet and kind of slide the ball through I think Van der Ven as he's sliding in and it goes into the bottom corner really good finish what I didn't like about Rashford's finish was his fucking celebration do you guys see Marcus Rashford's celebration against fucking Tottenham when he was fucking doing that hand signal with his flipping hand? Like, as in like, oh, everybody's talking. Too much talking. Bro, this guy has only scored two goals, I think, in the last four months. He's got four goals this season. I think so. And here he is doing the hand sign to the fans. Like, shut up. Stop talking. Like, I'm a bad boy player. Like, what, what, the ego that some of our players, why do our players have this level of ego? How can they have so much, like, you know, confidence, so much fucking bravado when they've achieved fucking absolutely nothing in a game and they're fucking garbage? If we had actually, if we had, had actual good owners, if we had, a, if we had a manager that wasn't, you know, that didn't have a tendency to pick his favorites, he wouldn't even be playing for Man United. That's the actual reality of the situation. He's probably playing at a worse level than what fucking Raheem Sterling was playing at before he got shifted from Man City. Man City saw Raheem Sterling's powers dwindling and they let him go to Chelsea. I think Rashford is playing at a worse level than Raheem Sterling was playing for Man City. And I think Raheem Sterling still got a couple of good years in him. Rashford has fucking been donkey shit. Two goals in two months and this nigga's out here doing, you know, stop talking hand puppet signs. To the fans either. He's not doing it to the to the pundits because the pundits haven't been criticizing him. It's only the fans. The fans have been going mad like myself, going to the manager. Why the fuck? Why the fuck are you keep playing this fucking guy? Why the fuck do you keep assisting with this dude when he's been playing so shit? Why isn't there like a meritocracy in this team? Why is it that some players, like a Bruno, like a fucking Scott McTominay, like a Rashford or whatever, right? Why is it they could just keep playing consistently, even Anthony, every single week, despite how badly informed they are, despite how badly they're actually performing in general on the pitch? And then when they do end up scoring a goal, right? A random goal, a goal that wasn't really worked in any kind of way, and they didn't really do anything else for the entire match here they are doing the fucking hand sign the hand puppet sign like actually what an absolute piece of shit he is honestly what an absolute piece of shit what an absolute piece of shit but again not surprised not bloody surprised at that so going back to the game second half starts and of course united do what we united do we start the again i don't know what this manager does to this team 
He gets the team in at halftime. I'm imagining he's giving them a rock, rock, rollicking. I imagine he's telling them to be organized, to be compact. And if any know thing about football, you know the second half, the first 10 minutes are the most important, especially if you're only 2 1 ahead. You want to keep yourself somewhat compact. You want to make sure you kind of quote unquote stifle the game. Maybe you want to catch them on a break and get another quick goal. But the last thing you want to do is concede a goal in the first 10 minutes of fucking extra time. And bitch, guess what happens? We can see the goal within the first 50 seconds of the second half. The first 50 seconds we can see the goal now don't get me wrong Benzikor's finish was fucking sublime and if to be honest he was the best midfielder on the pitch he's definitely a quality player Spurs have been missing him he's been injured for long spells of his Spurs career but when he plays that guy is fucking top quality he'd walk into our team with his fucking eyes closed and his, and his fucking arms behind his back he'd fucking play for us fucking hogtied if he wanted to he's a brilliant player but how can we concede a goal so quickly like that in the second half? And then, of course, once we concede that goal, guess what happened? It took all of the vibes. It took all of the energy. It took all of the umph that we had in the game out. We were done. We were done. The moment we conceded that goal, it was over. They wrapped it up. They put more pressure on us. They were flipping, firing shots at our goal. Possession was fucking crazy. And we were just chasing shadows. And it was so upsetting to watch. Of course, substitutions. What's the point of fucking getting into all that sort of shit? But again, this over-reliance and tendency to fucking go for Scott McTominay as a bloody option off the bench when we need a goal. Imagine, imagine Scott McTominay coming on as an option when we need a goal. Imagine the thought of that. Imagine bringing on Scott fucking McTominay as an option when he needs to fucking score a goal. And then you know what happened? He nearly actually scored a goal. He nearly actually scored a winning goal at the end. Right at the end, he nearly scored a winning goal, which would have been the biggest robbery of all time. You actually saw um, Eric Ten Hag react to it and rub his head and jump around. He knew deep down that would have been the biggest robbery of all time if we ended up nicking a goal from McTominay's um, headed header. I think it was a kind of natural cross, a pretty good cross actually, and he ended up kind of getting underneath it and not being able to finish it. But we didn't deserve to win. A draw probably was even not a deserved result for us anyway. And if anything, that performance is another reminder as to why I will be staunchly Ten Hag out. But I'm also very conscious of the idea that I don't want to caretaker manager. I also don't want us to get in somebody for the interim who's going to come in and get our hopes up. Either way, if we get an interim manager, it could either end up like a Ralph Ragnick situation where the players down tools and don't take that person seriously because they're essentially a glorified, you know, they're basically a football version of a supply teacher. Or it can go really well, like an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer thing. We get in the fucking interim manager, we have a, we have a, we have a new manager bounce and then they turn out to be shit. I don't want any of that. If anything, I want us to go through the entire January not signing a single player. I want us to get rid of who we want to get rid of in terms of trimming the squad down. And then I want Eric Ten Hag to stay until the end of the season and then get his marching orders at the end of the season. Even if he manages to get us in the top four, I don't care. Get him at the end of the season and then assess who you want as a manager in the summer with Enyos, whoever's fucking in charge. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see like a, you know, like a knee jerk reaction, get someone in now for the sake of it because I don't want that because if if anything, if we get someone in now, who are we going to get in? The ex-fucking uh, Brighton manager. The guy that got his confidence depleted at Chelsea. I don't want him. Do you know what I mean? I think he probably needs another job to get his confidence back a little bit. To kind of, you know, um, what you call it? Rebuild his reputation. And then maybe he might get another big job. But I don't think, even if I was him, I forgot his fucking name. Even if I was him, I wouldn't go to United anyway. Because that would be another real big blunder for him. Off the back of coming from getting sacked by Chelsea... And then, you know, maybe suffering a reputational damage that way. Then go into such a crazy hellhole psycho club like United. It wouldn't be the best move for him. So we probably would need to stay far away. Yeah, Graham Coop, Graham Potter, that's his name. Graham Potter. We probably need to stay far away from Graham Potter as possible. And Graham Potter needs to stay as far away from us as possible too. He doesn't need United. We don't need him also. Ayrton Hawks should see the season out regardless of how bad the results are. And then we can assess our options this summer. That's my opinion. I hope that's, you know, somewhat clear and you understand what I mean you can tell by the sound of my voice and how much I'm getting out of breath that I'm fucking pissed off but you know what it is what it is it is what it is